Hello and welcome to Unitrader. We'll continue today at our look at harmonic patterns, part two. So today we are going to be exploring the five point world of harmonic patterns, beginning with the bat. And we'll see how far we can get through. Don't want to make this video overly long, but there's a lot of material to cover. Uh, so if you wish, get some paper and a pen or pencil. Uh, or if you wish, you can join our Discord. The link will be in the description section and come and get some cheat sheets. So, the bat harmonic, considered to be one of the most accurate harmonic patterns. This is uh, straight from the mouth of Scott Kearney, who is also the man who discovered this pattern. And not just the bat, but all of these harmonic patterns, we're looking for them to form either over a strong support for a bullish harmonic or resistance, bearish. If not, we want ma many confluence factors, okay? As many as we can have, the more the better, as always. These are also commonly uh, quicker moves than other harmonics, and they are brilliant for new traders because they have very tight stop losses. In terms of harmonics, it's the tightest of the stop losses. So minimized risk, always good when you're beginning. Protect that capital, protect that capital. So this is what a bullish bat harmonic looks like. And this is the way that all harmonics are illustrated. And this looks a little bit confusing, but it's actually quite simple. I'll just give you a quick quick breakdown here of the solid lines compared to the broken lines. So these solid lines represent the price action. So you can pretty much see it's a an, an M pattern, M type pattern. Uh, and the broken lines are representing the Fibonacci levels that we're looking for between these. So you'll notice the broken line between X to B, that is a 0.382 to a 0.5 Fibonacci retracement. And that would be from the X to the A leg of that solid move. So the B point is going to be a retracement of X to A, and we're looking for the 382 to 5.0. Uh, respectively, the broken line between A to C is going to be the retracement from A to B, and the broken line from B to D will be the retracement from B to C. Okay, so if we do a, a fib extension from B to C, we want to look for a 1.618 to a 2.618. And the line between the X and the D is a fib pull from the high of the, sorry, from the low of the move to the high of the move. So in this case, X to A. So X to A, fib pull, we're looking for a 0.886 retracement to the point D. And that is how we're getting this deep retracement and minimal stop loss, okay? Here we look at the bearish bat, which is the exact same thing. It's just upside down, right? So pretty, pretty straightforward. So the bat harmonic elements, like I was just saying, the B point retracement of X and A must be less than a 0.618. Preferably, we're looking for a 0.5 or a 382. The BC projection must be at least a 1.618. And the C point within a range of 382 to 886, retracement of the AB. The AB equals CD pattern that we're going to find in this bat harmonic is usually extended. So, Let's just look here at the bullish bat. You'll notice that these harmonics begin on X. That is where the price action is going to begin. So we're picking a low from X. And once we hit A, B, and C, we're starting to form, you see that A, B equals C, D pattern. Now, obviously, A, B does not equal C, D in this scenario. So what we learned in the last video was that the AB equals CD, you're usually looking for a uh, equidistant move. In this case, the AB equals CD is extended. 
if that makes sense. So basically you're looking at a, a 1 to 2 extension or a, a 1 to 2.618, things of this nature. So having said that, again, the D point is a deep 886 retracement of the XA. So we're going to go to the chart after this next slide I do, and we'll go over that. And now comes the PRZ zone slide. So a lot of people do not use this as they should, because this is a very, very important part of harmonics that I do see a lot of people not using. And why is it important? Well, in my mind, it gives us multi levels of confirmation or confluence and also it is going to give us a range in which we can really analyze the price action to make a very well informed decision so having said that let's head over to the chart so here we are on the chart and i have transposed this uh, image here of a bearish bat just to help us visualize this a little bit better so we're on a 30 minute chart here on the bitcoin chart and there is a bat right here in this area so started on the 22nd of march at around 10 o'clock and it played out on the 23rd of March at 4.30. So pretty quick forming pattern and gives you lots of time to prepare. So before we get into the nuts and bolts of it, I will just show you quickly how this was mapped out. So we open up our XA VCD pattern and this was the move here. Here was the pattern. So it's a five point tool, you see, different to the ABCD that we did last uh, video, which is only a four point tool. This one we start on a high, come to a low, take another high, a low, and then another high. Now, obviously, none of this information was available to us. And what really starts off this pattern, I will explain to you with a Fibonacci retracement which at any time we're going from highs to lows, highs to lows, we're always pulling these fibs, right? Always pull fibs. Uh, I think, I think we got to make a, a movie about that. A, B, F, or A, P, F, I guess. Get to see if we can get uh, an old Glen Gary, Glen Ross cast together. Always pull fibs. All right, so from this high here, to this low, we had a retracement here to the 0.5. All right, I hope you can see that. This image is going to slightly disturb my ability to expand here, but see here, this green line is the 0.5. So from this high, we bounce down and we retrace to the 0.5. And that is an automatic signal to start looking for bat patterns. All right, so what we can do with this is quickly mark out some, some text on there if you need to. So at first it's not a bad idea because you're not really going to remember all of this stuff at first. Yeah, I didn't anyways, and now I can just look at it and sort of understand what's going on pretty quickly. But what I would recommend is you put in a little text box here, and we're going to call this X okay so here's our x point and then after this low we know that that is going to be our a our a point and because this gave us that 0.5 retracement right here we are going to put a b point here okay just to keep yourself organized. It's very important to keep yourself organized, especially at first, because there's so much going on, there's uh, so much to learn, and just keep things 
in, uh, on track, right? Uh, so now what we're going to do is we're going to take another fib pool here, the exact same fib pool actually. But remember that we haven't seen it, none of this has happened yet. So we've got this 0.5 and now price is starting to, to go back down, right? So because we got a 0.5 off of this fib pull, let's pull this B down a bit, what I would automatically mark out, this is personally, is this 886. Why? Because the X to the D retracement is an 886, right? And it is the most important part of our potential reversal zone which again is a three part zone a three level zone so as this is the most important I would automatically mark this out so what am I gonna do I'm gonna come over to my trusty trendline tools pick a horizontal ray and I'm gonna place it right over top of this 886 I am going to label it oh, 886 and I'm gonna make this color white okay and now I will delete that fib pull so I know now that this is my 886 level that will be a potential reversal area for this pattern now the next thing we need to do is wait for a pullback from the B and then wait for it to start moving its way back up. So after this massive green candle, uh, that's a, a pretty good indication that things are going to uh, continue moving up. It's very, very bullish candle this. It does come back down, but anyhow, well, that's neither here nor there because it never takes out this low. So once I get a feeling that this low is, has been put in I'm going to come over again to my patterns and we're going to pull out an AB equals CD pattern and we're going to not worry about this X at all so magnet on A to the B I'm going to assume now that this is a C and I haven't marked it out with text I know but now I'm just going to turn my magnet off real quick. And what we are looking for here is a 1.618 projection or a 2 or a 2.618. But these start getting really far away from this 886, right? So we're really looking for something as close to that as we can get. And I'm really liking this one, sort of a 1618 here. Seven two. Now we can also look at the reciprocals. Remember the reciprocal ratios of the ABCD patterns, and we can use those. Uh, however, I'm going to go for about a let's see here. five so what I've done is really uh, an a equals an a B equals CD it's pretty much one-to-one -one. and that's because we're so close to this uh, this eight eight six zone okay so now again a trusty horizontal. I'm going to bring it up to the terminus point here of my AB equals CD pattern. I'm going to change uh, this color. I'm going to add some text. AB equals CD. And I'm doing this because we really want to keep the most important line you know we want to know what the most important level here is and that is the 886 okay now I can delete my AB equals CD pattern 
And what we do now is we are going to find the uh, BC projection of 1.68 to 2.618. And it can also be a 2, it can be a lot of things in between, but again, we're going to use this 886 and try to find the closest, uh, most relevant levels to that, right? So for this, we're going to use, uh, you, you can put on, you know, you, you can customize a fib retracement and add these levels in. I use the, the extension. So what we're going to do here is go from this low point, which is the C that I haven't marked as C, back to the B. And then it's a three-click tool, the Fibonacci extension. So then we come back down. Haha. Uh -huh. But I'm not going to use that pull because I didn't have my magnet on. Oh, pardon me. Oh, well. Pardon me again. Okay, so from the C to the B, back to the C. And uh, that's pretty amazing. So our 1.618 is pretty much right on top of the 88. Uh, sorry, of the A, B uh, equals C, D. I mean, it's not right on top, but it is very, very close. Like, it is pretty much right on top. Uh, okay, and then we have this 2, which actually seems to be a bit closer to the 886 than the 618. However, this is one of those times where the rules start to become a little blurry because what the hard and fast rule is you take the closest level to the 886 so that is definitely the two however this is right on top of the a b c equidistant move right so oh i'm i'm going to go with the 1618 on this one and that's exactly what i did so I will once again put a horizontal line here and I will call it the one six one eight. Gonna change this to green. And there we go. And now I can delete once again this fib extension. So I'm also now going to delete this text and I'm going to go back to my harmonic pattern tools and I'm going to map this out again. So here's our C completed and now we're just waiting for this D. So what I will do is just mark this D up with the 886, pretty much. Uh, let me turn this magnet off. Okay. So I've lined it up there because this is the 886, and that's pretty well where I'm expecting it to go, hoping it will go there anyways. Uh, so that is the pattern. So the pattern kind of prints itself, right? It doesn't kind of, it does print itself. You add this on, but the more relevant part here is our PRZ zone, which is made up of these three levels. So how do we trade this? First off, let's just pull this down here and make sure that our levels are respected, right? So from the A to the C, we need to, in between a, a 382 and an 886, We've got a 763. That valid. From the X to the B, we need a 382 to a 0.5. We've got a 0.542. So for the purists out there, this is the way it goes. A 0.5 and a 0.54 is a 0.5, right? It's a, you know, we've got a wick here, so if, if we bring it down to the body, it's gonna be below. Watch. Yeah, that's a 4.5, right? So no big deal. That is still, let me just turn my magnet back on here and put this where it was. 
So that is still very relevant. 0.542, that is a 0.5. Uh, we need, in between B and D, we need a 1618 to a 2618, and there it is. Now, because this isn't a perfect Fibonacci number, this does this makes this pattern not a perfect bat pattern, right? But it is pretty darn close to a perfect bat. Now, the question is, how do we trade this? Now that we've figured out that, yes, the values are all within uh, the parameters, this is a valid pattern potentially forming, how do we look to enter a trade? Well, the first thing I do is, no matter what chart I'm on, this could have been a four-hour pattern, could have been a weekly, this could have even formed on a monthly chart, right? So I'm not entering any positions based on any information on a one-month chart. I have to go on to a much lower time frame. So let's hit the five-minute chart. And here's our price action on the five minute chart, which is much more uh, informative than the, the half hour chart, right? You, you really get to see what's going on a lot quicker. Some people might even wanna go down to the one minute chart. I find that a little excessive. So what we're looking for here, the fast and hard rules of the PRZ zone is that these three levels must be taken out, right? The first two, uh, we, we can close candles above, we can hover around in between here and D for a while, but the 886, we cannot have a half hour candle body close above this level. That is the hard and fast rule. Now that doesn't necessarily mean every single time that, that you know, if you close a half hour candle above this that you aren't going to come back down and this, pro this pattern won't play out, right? But that is the hard and fast rule. So when you're beginning, sometimes it's better to miss moves and learn from missing them than it is to take moves and lose money that you're not following rules by, right? So that's the beauty of this is it really gets you to start uh, following a system that has rigid rules and we use those rigid rules to become more disciplined less emotional and you know you're doing everything right so if if this does cross all of these and then turns against us and we have a losing trade then you can still walk away being relatively happy because okay you, you didn't you, you lost a little bit of money but you did everything right you followed your system you did everything that you were supposed to do and that is the name of this game you cannot win every trade you're never going to win every trade now if this you know if, if you start FOMOing in here so let's just have a closer look here we have this this first touch here is rejected but we clear both the ABCD and the 1618 projection right we come back down we hit it again then we form a new candle, come back down, or actually we, we went up quite a bit first maybe, then we came back down, no, not maybe, we definitely did. Uh, we come back, test it again, you know, we come down, we, we test it again. Now, if you start getting in here and you're, woohoo, you're off to the races all happy, but then it turns around and rips up and you lose the trade anyways, then you're going to be kicking yourself in the butt because you did not follow the parameters, right? You don't, you, you didn't follow the rules. So follow these rules, get rigid about your rules, and then use the, the, the losses to refine your rules and use your wins to really start to gauge what's working for you, okay? So we can see this price kind of did fake people out then came back up, finally took this 886 level, and we have this very bearish candle here. So this is a very good sign here. If you don't have order flow software, if you can't see open interest and understand whether this move is coming off of just longs taking profit, or longs closing out, or is this move actually new shorts opening, you know, you're not gonna be able to know this without order flow knowledge. So either get some free order flow stuff uh it's usually pretty hard to read or, or or get some you know some relatively cheap 
uh, order flow stuff like exocharts. It's pretty cheap. It's 20, I think it's 27, uh, 27 US a month, or maybe 27 euros a month, but it's not expensive. Um, so once we get this bearish shooting star, basically, that got shot down, uh, you can start to really see, okay, there's a lot of selling pressure here, right? We have this big wick. We have another monster wick. We have this a sort of a undecisive candle here. Then we monster back up with a big green candle, and then the selling pressure pushes us right back down. So this is a very good entry here. A very good entry just based off of these factors alone because we do have essentially three factors of confluence here using just one pattern and that's the beauty of the PRZ because you're just adding on layers of confluence right now I personally would never trade that I personally would not yes you've got good uh, levels of confluence but it, with with the PRZ uh, factors however if I don't have order flow software then I want more I mean I want more so there are other things here uh, that I did use even though I have order flow software <laughs> I'm, I still like more and generally this is what happens on these good trades you can find like six seven eight levels of confluence and that's really what you want depending on the strength of, of the confluences okay I'll show you one I am not a trend line trader, just so we get this clear. I do not trade trend lines, but I do use them for confluence. So the last two highs, that is another added level of confluence, okay? That's where our pattern ends. So beautiful. Let me go back to the 30 minute chart here. And I will pop back on our harmonic here. Okay. I'm going to use a tool that we haven't gone over yet, but I'm going to use a fib channel. FIB channel is a three-point tool, so pick a low, pick another low, and then pick a high. And look at this. Here's the 618. On the FIB channel, another level of confluence. And we can find more. You know, you keep building up, building up the story, building up the story, building up the story. And, you know, basically be your own lawyer, man. Build up a case and convince yourself. And if you can do that, uh, then enter it and have no fear. Win, lose, or draw, right? Because you, as long as you have a lot of confluence, as long as you're doing... Uh, the right risk management you're not going to lose much and you're going to learn you're going to keep learning so what what confluence works best you know like what but for me i like trend lines for confluence but they're not very strong a trend line especially off a little wicks and on a 30 minute chart you know if this was a monthly chart and uh and i had this trend line it it holds a lot more weight for me but in these situations where it's just adding confluence, you know, brilliant, brilliant. The more things you can find, the better. So uh, there you go. That's that's another. So we had a, a 618 off a of FIB channel. We have this trend line, you know, and just keep looking for more and more and more confluence. OK. And that, my friends, is how we map these out and we trade them. All right.
So in terms of, uh, well, I'm not going to mark that out yet. Okay, in terms of taking profit, what are we going to do now? So here's our B point. Again, horizontal ray off of the B. And we're going to take a horizontal point and we're going to go off of the C. And that is it. And now I'm going to remove uh, the bat here just so this is not looking so crazy. Okay, so this is our B point. You can label this if you wish. And here's our C point, right? And here's our D point. So we enter the trade here. We come down I personally am a pretty conservative trader so as soon as I'm in a slight profit I will take profits out small like I'll take out usually around 10% of my position and then I will move my stop loss accordingly to a to cover my position right so uh, I still am not in a winning trade I'm in a break even trade even though I've already taken 10% profit out just to just to keep a little bit of breathing room still for the trade because sometimes it will come back up and retest so that is what I like to do personally. But the big take profit is going to be at the B point here. So at the B point, I close out 50% of my trade. Now I'm going to come back down to the five minute chart here because it's a lot better to look at how price reacts around these levels. Okay, so here's the opening of our trade. This is our B point, this is our C point, which is gonna be our second take profit. So as, I, as we come down, we test this B point, see how we get a, a, a reaction off of it, but we've already hit it and there's our first take profit done. So. Personally, again, I close out 50% of my trade and I move my stop loss into a slight profit because many times once you hit the B point, you'll get a little bit of a, a push back up. So I don't want to move my stop loss aggressively. I just want to put it into slight profit. I've already closed out 50% of my trade and I've already made great profits off of this. Uh, just measure this out. I believe this was about 0.9%. Yep, 0.93%. That's almost a 1% move in a very short amount of time. And boom, you've taken out your profit. What is this? Ah, I've left some red dots. So after, you'll see how it kind of comes back up, retest this a little bit, but not much, and it just keeps going down. So at this point, as soon as we have this big red candle here, that emphatically shows us that, yeah, it looks like we're going to continue down. What I'll do then is I will move my stop loss just above this V line, this last little high, right? So I would have had my stop loss just above this line here. And I'll change this color to red. And I'm looking for my second take profit down here at the D line but guess what it never comes it's a sad day because it never comes and price turns around and boom stop me out then it kind of makes this little dip to make people go oh no I closed out it's still going lower and you jump back into the market with a short revenge trading you know and then boom <laughs> so you know this is a winning trade did i expect it to come down here yes i hoped it would i really hoped it would but you know what it didn't so that's that's why it's so important to really kind of get this stuff going in a in a rule driven way okay 
Rules, 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 my friends. So just so we get a good idea here. This is my entry. This, oh, magnet off. This was my target. And that's it. So, risk to ratio reward, 5.39. And that is why the bat is amazing for the new traders, okay? But honestly, work at it, work at it, work at it. You know, this is not something that comes, like, very quickly overnight. Uh, but within a couple of weeks, if you just keep hammering out harmonics, you will start to see them everywhere. And, and honestly, the, the risk-to-reward ratio is quite incredible. Now, yes, we didn't hit that. So let's just bring this up to stop loss here where I actually got stopped out and you're still looking at a 2.32 risk to reward ratio which is uh, you know that's pretty decent oh, hold on and at my first take profit 2.46 so not a bad risk to reward ratio at all that actually played out but again the actual projected target was was pretty massive that was a fantastic risk to reward ratio and that is the beauty of this now there is one thing to keep in mind with the bat pattern let's go back to our presentation slide so one thing we must keep in mind with these patterns is sometimes there are deviations and there are these will be uh, classified into like perfect patterns so there is the absolutely perfect bat pattern uh, let me just we'll look at the, the bullish one here the perfect bat would be uh, an X to a retracement to B of 0.5 okay so there's these certain rules that we can find that make these patterns perfect however the, they're, they're few and far between the perfect ones. The, it's very, very rare. But I, I will put these all in cheat sheets and put them on the Discord server. Uh, but what we really want to be careful with with the bat harmonic, there is one essential thing that you must be aware of, and that is the bullish alternate bat or the bearish alternate bat. So the, ba the, the, the bat we were looking at on the chart Remember, it retraced from A to X, retraced to the 0.5, which is where you're looking at your perfect bat situation. So that bat that we had was was it was pretty close to perfect, but not, you know, very rare, very rare. But what do we see here is the difference between the bullish al alternate bat, and again, they're going to give you the uh, some of this info is not a hundred percent, but the main difference is that the the retracement from a to x is a 0.382 you see how the uh, broken line from a to b there's only one number there so the bullish alternate bat is very specific it could still be a normal bat but if it hits the 382 if that is the uh retracement that we get on our fib pool then we must be careful of this pattern being an alternate bat so you will look at point d now and see that it actually retraces deeper than the 886 and it goes to a, a retracement of 1.13 so it will actually extend beyond the initial start of the the pattern at a so if you were throwing in your orders at 88 at the uh, 886 level from the the normal bat retracement you would most likely be getting stopped out so when it hits the 382 be prepared or sorry when it hits if the ax uh, retracement to b is only is uh, 382 and doesn't go lower be prepared 
for an alternate bat. Doesn't mean it's coming. It might just be a normal bat, but something to keep in mind, okay? So that is going to pretty much do it for the bats. Um, and also look for the, the bearish alternate bat, right? It works both ways. Exactly. It's the same thing exactly, except flipped over. I'll also put one of these uh, illustrations on the Discord server. Um, and that is about it, I believe. If you have any questions, concerns, leave a comment below, join the Discord, hop in the chat, and uh, we'll be happy to help you out, okay? Thank you very much. Hope this was informative, and you have a great day.